The start to this season has been a strange one for Carlos Sainz. Looking from the outside with no context, in only his second year at Ferrari, they've finally returned to the top of Formula 1, he has a consistent race-winning car for the very first time in his career, he has scored back-to-back -back podiums in the first two races, and that currently leaves him second in the World Championship. All of that is great, and yet, just as the car gets better, so do the expectations. And bringing all that context back into the picture, it has been a disappointing start to 2022. Carlos is on the back foot and it's now time to see if he has what it takes after all of these years of being one of the best drivers in the midfield to step up and become a challenger for a world championship, or if he'll have to become the number two driver at Ferrari. Sainz has always been described as a driver who is underrated because even though he beat Lando twice and then beat Charles in his first season at Ferrari, he's a driver who still doesn't have a lot of hype behind him. In my opinion, the Sainz is underrated argument now has to stop. Sainz is not underrated anymore because we now know that he's undoubtedly one of the best on the field and although I can't speak for anyone else, I have given Carlos Sainz a huge amount of praise over the past year as someone who on his day can more than match the likes of Verstappen and Leclerc. But here's the thing, if my opinion is that Sainz is no longer underrated, then we now have to judge him by the same standards that he has set himself over the past few seasons. And that's why he has been a disappointment so far in the first two races. Statistically speaking, he has not done anything wrong. In every qualifying session, he has been right up there and challenging for pole position. And in Saudi Arabia, he was actually on provisional pole. But then on his final run, he felt that the brand new set of tyres didn't give him the grip that he wanted. And so he ended up dropping down to third. Overall, across the first two qualifying sessions, he has been just over a tenth and a half behind Charles. And considering Charles is a driver with some of the best raw pace on the grid, that's not bad. The problem has been in the races. Now, Carlos Sainz has never been the fastest driver on a Saturday, even against Lando across their time as teammates, Lando outqualified Carlos. He's always been a driver, however, that shines most on the days that are important, and that's on a Sunday. However, what's been most surprising to me in 2022 is his deficit to Leclerc in the races. Both of the first two races have, however, been affected by safety cars and incidents, so the gaps are a little bit distorted. But we can still take a look at parts of races where the safety car either hadn't been deployed or after the safety car when everything was neutralized. In Bahrain before Gasly's retirement and just before Sainz went in for his final stop, after 45 laps he was almost 18 seconds behind Leclerc. Then in Jeddah, if we take a look from lap 20 onwards, which is where the safety car period stopped and the field was bunched up, we can kind of ignore the late VSC because the field would have been neutralized somewhat, but in those 30 laps, Sainz still finished behind Max and Charles by over 8 seconds. This to me has been really surprising because I fully expected Carlos, especially on the Sunday, to be pushing and putting pressure on Charles and Max, and potentially capitalizing on both of them if they were battling and losing time. In Bahrain, when Max and Charles had their battle and were losing time by doing so, Sainz should have been right there to pick up the pieces. In Jeddah, when Max and Charles battled again, very late on and were messing around with the DRS line locking up, Sainz again should have been right there to put pressure on both of them if they made any mistakes. Carlos himself after the race was relatively upbeat, talking about how he definitely felt an improvement with the car from Bahrain to Saudi, and although he didn't want to give too much away, he said that he knew exactly which corners he was losing time at, and where he wasn't feeling as comfortable with the car. When I did my blind early season predictions before we saw any of the cars in testing, and actually before we saw any of the cars even launched, I still picked Leclerc to finish ahead of Sainz because... Although I felt that there were aspects of Sainz that were stronger than Leclerc, to me ultimately in Formula 1, there is no substitute for raw speed. You either have it or you don't. Now, whilst last year both of the drivers were in the midfield in their tight battle with McLaren, there was always more variables in those races because when you're in the midfield, you're never going to have a clean run. 
and this is where Sainz sometimes had a better race pace compared to Leclerc to take advantage of some of those variables. That argument is now completely gone because even though I don't think that Leclerc is massively better than he was last year, I do think that like all great drivers, he has stepped it up a notch just as the car has stepped up as well. What has happened now is that Leclerc's blistering raw pace, which he's always had, that is covering up any shortcomings that he might have, because with a consistent race winning car, most of the job has been done in qualifying with him being on the front row for both of the first two rounds. And then when we get to the races, because there's less variability now due to his great qualifying, Leclerc just lets his speed do the talking, and in that department Sainz just isn't as fast as Leclerc to be able to catch him up and overtake him with a clean run at the front. This is something that I've talked about before. You can be a superstar in the midfield scoring consistent points and picking up the occasional podium, but when it comes to fighting for consistent wins, and then potentially world championships, that is a whole different ball game that requires you to step up as a driver, both in terms of your ability and also your mental toughness. Of course, Carlos Sainz knows all of this. I mean, even though he scored back-to-back -back podiums and has scored more points in the last two races than across any other two races in his career, you can tell in his interviews that he's not happy to be there and that simply being on the podium is not enough because with this car at his disposal, the F1 World Championship is more than a possibility. The next five races are going to be critical because even after the first two, anything is still really possible. Both of the Mercedes can still win the championship and even Checo can still be the champion. But once you get seven or eight races into a season, you can see the championship picture and you can see who really is going to be leading their team and who might now have to start playing the number two role. And if Carlos doesn't find more speed in qualifying and then more race pace to hold off Charles and Max, he might quickly find himself pushed into that number two role. The best two driver comparison that I can make is Nico Rosberg and Valtteri Bottas. In 2013, in an upper midfield Mercedes that could get some marginal wins, both Nico and Lewis were pretty close, just like Charles and Max were last year. But when they were then given a championship level car in 2014, both were able to raise their levels and cope with the pressure of fighting for a title, and hence Nico pushed Lewis to a title decider. In contrast with Valtteri, however, although he had a mega start to 2017 and after 9 races he was only 15 points behind Lewis, the problem was that he was 35 points behind Seb who was leading. And unlike Lewis who then went on to win 4 of the next 5 races to get himself back into title contention, Valtteri just wasn't able to take that big step and if we're being honest he was never able to take that big step from that moment on and ultimately that's where he became a number two and that's what he was for his entire time at Mercedes. And that's what it comes down to. Great drivers like Lewis and Charles can find another gear when the opportunity of a race winning car is presented to them. Nico was also able to find it as well, and Valtteri just wasn't. That's not to say that Valtteri is a bad driver, I mean, I think people now that he's at Alfa Romeo for 2022 are just being reminded of just how good of a driver Valtteri is, and also I think some people are now re-evaluating just how good that means Lewis must be as well. But the question still stands, can Carlos Sainz find another gear and step it up to B on the level of Leclerc and Verstappen? I have no doubt that Carlos Sainz will improve and to be honest, when I saw how good the car actually was in Bahrain, in my mind I predicted Sainz to get a minimum of 3 race wins this season. I know that eventually he'll get there because Sainz is a quality driver that you just can't count out. But during a Formula 1 season, there is a theoretical tipping point where even if a driver still mathematically can win the title, due to their points gap to either the leader or their teammate, it just becomes more sensible and more beneficial for the team to start using that driver as a number 2 to increase their chances of winning what only one driver can win. 
If that happens to Sainz with two or three races to go, then that'll mean that Carlos Sainz would have pushed for the title until the very end of the season. But if that happens in seven or eight races time, with him becoming the number two for Ferrari and Leclerc, that will really affect the perceptions of Carlos, and it might just set the tone for the years to come. Well, there you have it, another video wrapped up. If you did enjoy this video and want to support the channel, then don't forget to subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one.